five exam or two thousand I think two thousand and six. So I gave you guys the two thousand and four, two thousand and five exams because that year still the written sections were longer. There was sixty marks worth of written and sixty marks worth of multiple choice. Those of you that are writing the provincial, now you'll find I think it's uh seventy 40 or something like that, or 70, 50. Though they made the multiple choice longer because they don't want to pay teachers to mark exams anymore. I suspect in about five years, the exam, well, the grade 10 exams are already completely multiple choice. So, here is the first question. It says, a hammer, hopefully you can read, if not, move forward. A hammer slides down a ro roof sloped at 35 degrees, reaching a speed of 4.6 meters per second before falling off. How much time does it take to fall the 15 meters to the ground? This is a projectile-ish question. Now, usually, Sam, when we did projectiles, they were launched from cliffs at upwards angles. Looks like this is launched from a cliff at a downwards angle. Okay, I won't let it freak me out. What we still said you want to do is you absolutely want to go components. I'm just finished teaching projectiles with my physics 11s this year. And so what I've taught them, as soon as they deal with a projectile question, they draw a big line down the middle of the page, and they go horizontal and they go vertical and I've yelled at them right away they go horizontal acceleration equals vertical acceleration equals and they would fill this in and I'm gonna ask you to fill this in let's jog our memory horizontally for a projectile if we ignore air resistance what's the acceleration horizontally for a projectile do you remember zero Vertically for a projectile, if we ignore air resistance, what's the acceleration vertically for a projectile? I got to be really fussy because now we're in vectors uh, negative 9.8. Okay? Then hopefully, Christina, you would also say to yourself, self, if we're going horizontal and vertical, why don't I take that velocity of 4.6 meters per second and why don't I break it up into horizontal and vertical. I'll call this VX, I'll call this VY initial. Why did I put an initial next to the VY but not next to the VX? <coughs> why did I put an initial here? Yeah, VX is, since there's no acceleration, V final is V initial is V, you know what, it's just the horizontal velocity the whole time. Uh, the Y one will be changing, in fact I can tell you what's going to happen. The y one is going to be negative, and it's going to be getting bigger negative as it falls. Oh, uh, the thirty-five. Well, the thirty-five is right here, so I'm pretty sure the thirty-five ends up right there with our good old alternate interior z angles rule. We're pressed for time, so I'll take a few shortcuts. I think v x is cosine. Let's see, uh, adjacent hypotenuse opposite. Vx is going to be 4.6 cosine of 35 and Vy is going to be 4.6 sine of 35. Let's crunch that and see what we get. So I'll add that to my little list here. Vx equals and Vy initial equals. <gasps> What do we get for Vx? Oh, I know why things are running slow. This antivirus thing is trying to scan and it slows the machine down like crazy. Abort. What's Vx? My calculator is not booting up. It's going to take ages. So someone needs to type this in. And the faster you type this in, the more review we get. So chop, chop. Let's participate. What's Vx? 3.8? Give me a few extra digits because I don't want to. This is not my final answer. I'm going to be using it. 3.768. What's VY initial? 2.634? Okay. 2.638. Like that? Okay. Always carry a few extra digits if it's not your final answer. Don't be rounding off early. Um, what do they want me to find in this question? How much what? Time. To find time, they have to give me some type of a displacement. Did they give me a vertical displacement or a horizontal displacement in this question? Vertical. So I'm going to solve the rest of this 
vertically. Now, also they can give you a horizontal displacement. We call that the range. Or sometimes they can sneak it in. If you launch from the ground and end up on the ground, what's your vertical displacement? Zero, because you're changing height is zero. Don't let them scare you with that one. They'll do that one once in a while, too. But I know that my vertical displacement is, what is my vertical displacement? Give you a hint, not 15. And also, does anybody see my mistake right here? It's not yet. No, it has to be. It's down. I have to, oh, sorry, you're saying, yeah, my mistake was that it's not negative. Yes. I thought you were saying it wasn't supposed to be negative. And I want to find time. Uh, do I have an equation that has those in it? Oh, I didn't write negative 15. Good gosh. Thank you. Is that what you were saying? Hey, I was marking until 10.30 last night. Sorry. <coughs> hey, what equation? I think this one. The common mistake kids make is they put vertical into horizontal or horizontal into vertical. So keep them separate. I think we're going to probably have to pull out the quadratic equation here. <clears throat> Let's see. I think we're also going to need more room, Mr. Duke. Uh, negative 15 equals negative 2.638 t minus 4.9 t squared. Where'd the negative 4.9 come from? Okay, half a. And yeah, you have to use the quadratic formula. Oh, how do I know this is a quadratic equation, Megan? So make it equal to zero. I'll plus this over. Zero equals negative 4.9 t squared minus 2.638 t plus 15. Or you could have plus both of these to the other side and had less negatives. You'll get the same answer no matter what. Now probably many of you have built-in quadratic solvers and things and my understanding is if you went straight to the, if you wrote down the quadratic formula right now, which we will, it's on your formula sheet by the way if you haven't noticed. <coughs> Or you can use the German PQ one as long as you can as long as you can solve an equation like that. I'm good. I don't, I don't care how you do it. Okay. Okay. So we would go like this. This is the quadratic equation. If you haven't seen this before, where that number there is a, that number there is b, that number there is c, and then you just plug them into there. It looks like this t equals, I'll use t equals instead of x, negative b, negative negative 2.638 is going to be positive 2.638, plus or minus the square root of negative 2.638 squared, there's b squared, minus 4 times a, negative 4.9, times c, positive 15, all over, 2a, which is negative 9.8. I can do 2a in my head. If you can solve a quadratic using the, the p and q one, then I'm fine. I don't care how you do it, just as long as you can. Okay. <clears throat> now, I've given most of you that built-in quadratic solver, and you're welcome to use it now, because they can't tell. I'll do this by hand, just in case some of you for gotten how to use the quadratic solver or have deleted it or don't have a graphing calculator. I would do the inside of the square root first bracket negative 2.638 close bracket squared minus 4 times negative 4.9 times 15. The inside of the square root is 300.959. That's probably good enough to round off. So it's going to be 2.638 plus or minus the square root of 300 point, what did I say, 959, all over negative 9.8. And now let's actually get an answer. Bracket 2.638 plus the square root of 300.959, close bracket for the square root, close bracket for the top, because there's two terms on the top, Spencer, so i got to put the whole thing in brackets, 
divided by negative 9.8. One of my roots is negative 2.03 negative 2.0. Of course, we can't have a negative time, so I'm going to ignore that one. Then I'll redo the same equation because it's plus or minus 1.50. And there's my final answer, time. If they wanted to make this question a little different, usually what they would do here, Sam, is give you an upwards velocity and then ask for the range. So here, they just tweaked it for five marks. Probably a lot of kids would have missed putting a negative right there. Okay. Other questions that we did, there's one where they, uh, if you look at the review, the last question on the review, this one shows up fairly often, where they fire it into a wall, you know how, from the ground, you know how high up it hits the wall, and they want you to figure out the range or they tell you the range, how far to the wall, how high up does it hit the wall. They have to somewhere, though, give you some kind of a displacement, either vertical or horizontal. You can use that to find time of flight, and once you know time of flight, then just be very, very careful breaking up horizontal and vertical and solve for whatever you needed. The key to remember, though, Savannah, is horizontal, AX is 0, vertical, AY, negative 9.8. Oh, yeah, this is usually what they give. Okay. Something like that. I think if you guys are doing okay, I'm going to be bad and skip that one. If you want to try it at home when I post this online, you can try it yourself. So they've given you uh, 20 meters per second. They gave you time in this case. If they give you the time, the question really falls apart because you don't need the quadratic equation anymore. Just break everything into horizontal and vertical. Again, Spencer, be very careful. Horizontal acceleration, zero. That means <coughs> dx is just vxt not plus a half a t squared, because a is 0. Vertical acceleration, negative 9.8. Torques, I think, is what I need to review for a bunch of you. So here's what it says. A 4 meter long steel beam is supported 3 meters from a hinge by a cable attached as shown. Find the mass of the steel beam. This is a fairly tough one. I, there was an easier one. I picked this one instead. What we do here, well, we would label our diagram with all the forces. It's a free body diagram, but instead of redrawing it, I'll just draw it right on here. What are the forces acting on this bar? Get the obvious ones. Where? Okay, so this is four meters long. I'm going to put straight down mg, where this distance here is two, center of mass. What other forces are acting on this bar? Well, tension. I also suspect, Sam, that there is a vertical force right here, because I don't think tension is canceling out all of gravity. And I notice tension is pulling to the right a little bit. Is the bar moving to the right? Then there has to be a force to the left. But because I'm using torques, and I'm going to put my pivot right there, how far are both of these forces from the pivot? Zero. So what will their torque be? Zero. I can ignore them. Woohoo! But I did that with you just in case, as a part A for one mark, they said, draw a free body diagram. Yeah. Uh, not with one this tough. It would, uh, if they gave you a nice horizontal bar, sure. And what you would do is you would find all your vertical forces on using torques, and you'd say, "What's missing? This one has to counteract that vertical force." And then you would find all you would find. Well, in this case, you would find the right-hand component of this guy because that's the only sideways force. Well, that's how big that is. And then if you added those two together, tip to tail, you'd get the resultant. Okay, that's a fairly tough one. I, yeah, it showed up once in a while. Don't panic if it does. Um, I don't think I'm giving you one like that on your written. That It shows up on the real provincial. Yeah. Okay. On your written, your written, I'm going to be doing, and I think I've said this already, one kinematics or forces. Those are combined as one unit. So you're either going to have a winner minus loser question or a projectile kind of a question. One energy or momentum or a combination of both, like one of the ballistic pendulum collision thing. Okay. And then it'll be one equilibrium. Uh, it'll either be the... Uh, 
uh, traffic street sign, the one that looks like this with the weight hanging, or torque. Hopefully you picked up the hint there. Uh, then there's, that's question four. Question five will be a circular motion. Probably it'll be a, some kind of a gravitation one, how much work to get an orbit or orbital radius or something like that. Okay. If it's orbital radius and speed FC equals FG, if it's work, think work equals change in potential plus change in kinetic, and then read the question very, very carefully. Are they just lifting it up? Is it stopped? Then change in kinetic is zero. Oh, are they putting it in orbit? Then there's also a change in kinetic. I'll have to figure out a velocity. Um, that's unit five. Uh, unit six, there will be one electrostatics question. Okay. Unit seven, there'll be a circuit for you guys to solve. Unit eight, there'll be a magnetic forces. Then there's going to be a question nine. Question nine is going to be interpreting a graph. I'm going to give you some kind of a graph. I may ask you to graph the data. It'll be a little chart. I may ask you to draw a line of best fit. I may not. But what I'm going to specifically ask you to do is either do something with the slope or the area and interpret it. Remember, to do that, what you do is for slope, divide the units. You can usually figure out what the heck it is. For area, multiply the units. You can usually figure out what the heck it is. And then the last question will be a using principles of physics, right, to explain. So there's, I think, nine or ten questions. Okay. That's what the old provincial exams were. I like those because that way you kind of knew, oh, I'm on question five. It's circular motion. It goes in the same order that I taught you. You kind of know where you are. They've shortened the written, as I already said, but that's okay. Let's continue here. So we would, oh, you know what, though? Here's the problem. <clears throat> Both of these are useless to me <clears throat> because we said that torque had to have perpendicular components of force. So I'm going to go like this. There's mg perpendicular. There's parallel. Here's tension perpendicular. There's parallel. Christina, what angle is right here? What angle is right here? 40. That one I can do pretty easy. I think the, the Z rule, I've got an angle in that triangle. Uh, this one's going to be a lot tougher. Way tougher. Let's see. What angle is right here? What angle is right there? Yeah, we called that, she said, Savannah said 65. We called that, you may recall from Math 11, corresponding. Now can you see a Z? As it turns out, this angle here is 65 degrees. Uh, in this bottom force, hypotenuse opposite. Now, I'm just going to do this just to clear up my diagram. I'm going to put that 150 newtons right here because that's where it is, right? Unfortunately, it just overlaps with the way we drew it. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be hypotenuse. Uh, oh, also opposite. Both of these happen to be sine, which is kind of nice. How could they make this tougher? I'll be honest. This is probably because we got diff two different angles considered tough. If they gave you a, a horizontal bar, they'd add an extra mass on the end. But usually the mass hands hang straight down and there's no components. It's a little nicer. So we're going to say this. The sum of all the torques clockwise in that direction equals the sum of all the torques counterclockwise in that direction. And congratulations, you just got one mark. Right? They will give you, I, I've yelled at you guys about never leaving a question blank. Even if you're able to write down what you think is the correct formula, usually you get a mark for that because you've recognized what it is. They, they, they value that. Clockwise. What would cause this, if that's my hinge, what would cause this to spin clockwise? Now remember, we're looking at this and this, because those are my only perpendicular components. Which of those would cause this to spin in this direction? Mg perpendicular. So it's going to be Mg perpendicular times its distance from the pivot. Two. And I think that's it. Equals uh, tension perpendicular. How far from the pivot? does say 3. The scale looks a bit weird, but 
uh, times 3. Over off in the margin, I would write this uh, as a trig function. Let's see. Opposite over hypotenuse sine of 65 equals the perpendicular component over mg. So, Megan, can you get the perpendicular component by itself? What's this equal to from this? So I'm going to replace this with mg sine 65. Common mistake, Megan, for some reason kids forget to drop the 2 down. I don't know why, but often it vanishes. Equals. And often the margin somewhere. Let's do the trig for this guy. So we have tension per uh, sine. Sine of 40 equals perpendicular over tension. Megan, could you uh, re rewrite this and get tension perpendicular by itself? Okay. T sine 40 times 3. What are they wanting us to find in this question? What is the What if they ask for the weight? What are they asking me to find? Mg. I did that to you guys, I think, on your unit test on this unit. Um, it doesn't show up very often, but that's just like cheap marks. Don't throw that away. Read the question carefully. So it looks like here the mass is going to be the tension times the sine of 40 times 3 divided by the sine of 65 times 2. Tension was 150 times G. Thank you. Sin, tension was 150. Uh, sine 40, 3, divided by sine 65 times 2 times 9.8. Don't need to do negative 9.8. We took care of the, in, our, in our torques, we took care of the negatives. Uh, make sure I'm in degrees. I am. 150, sine 40 times 3 divided by, this has to be in brackets, sine 65, close bracket, times 2 times 9.8, close bracket. Did I miss anything? 150, sine 40. By the way, why don't I have to put this in brackets? Your calculator assumes things are on the top, if you don't tell it specifically, right? Uh, I'm getting 16.3 kilograms. Jesse. Okay. Center of mass is weird, but yeah, I'll be here. Uh, here's another one that shows up. I'm just going to get this one started, and then uh, we'll talk about this. Can I get, yeah, yeah, I can get it all on one page. The ladder question. In fact, I think in your notes I called this the famous ladder problem. They want us to find the minimum force of friction between the ladder and the floor that's required to keep the ladder from sliding. Okay. Let's list all of the forces on this ladder. Get the obvious ones. Okay, we have the mass of the ladder. Um, let's see. The ladder is 5 meters, so um, the mass of the ladder would be right about here. I'll call it mass of the ladder times g. And then we also have the mass of the person. I won't draw it quite that big. Mass of the per person times g. We would also have a normal force right there. Because it's touching a wall, it's leaning against the wall, so the wall will push back. There will also be a normal force right here. So you know what I'm going to do? I'll call this normal force number one because it's the one from the floor that we're used to. I'll call this, instead of normal force, I'm going to make the N into a W. I'll call it force of the wall. Hmm? This can't possibly be it. Sorry to interrupt classes, but we have a blue K 
caravan parked in the back parking lot that is blocking the access. License JJF182. If you could go out immediately and move it. The blue caravan in the back parking lot, JJF182. 182. Force of the wall. Christina, what direction is this force? Are there any other forces to the right? Then this ladder would have to be accelerating. Ah, wait a minute. I think friction is that way. Uh, not only that, I think normal force number one cancels out the mass of the person times g and the mass of the ladder times g. And the force of the wall equals friction. To do this question, we would go components, components, use torques to find this. Once you know that, you know force of the wall, and that's friction. In other words, even though this question is saying find the minimum force of friction, you're not. You're going to find the force of the wall, which is friction. Okay. Problem is, this question would take me about 10 minutes, and I haven't got that much time. We did a couple like that in your homework if you look. The lesson was called The Famous Ladder Problem. I think it was lesson four of equilibrium, something like that. Momentum. Whoop. Wrong button. A curling stone is sliding along the ice when it hits a stationary 15 kilogram bucket of sand. After the collision, the curling stone's velocity is 3 meters per second east. I better draw a compass. And the bucket has a velocity of 22 meters per second, 40 degrees south of east. What direction was the curling stone moving before the collision? So this is a collision. Collision, momentum. Let me say this again. Collision, momentum. I'm going to say this one more time. Hint, hint, hint. Collision, momentum. Hopefully you'll remember that in a couple of days. Okay? And here's what we said. The sum of all of the initial momentum, the sum of the momentum before the collision, was the same as the sum of the momentum after the collision. Unfortunately, this was not like energy where you went also kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. Those were scalars. Those you could solve by, solve by doing straight math and cross multiplying and you were done. These momentum as a vector, we're going to carefully draw pictures. After the collision, what do I have moving? Curling stone, which way? So I'm going to draw that like this. There's the curling stone. How much momentum does it have? Momentum was what times what? Okay, so you, by the way, you might want your formula sheet in front of you. Just a thought, saying, good learning. Did I really need to tell you guys that? I guess I did. Oh, I weep. It's going to be 10 times 3. There's my mass times velocity. And I have something else moving. Bucket. What's the velocity of the bucket? Direction. South of east, okay, I'm going to go like this. It's 40 degrees south of east, so 40 degrees south of east. And it has a momentum of 15 times 2.2. And this question wants to know the direction that the curling stone was moving before the collision. That's going to be this here. I don't know it. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do I add two vectors together? If I draw these tip to tail, I should be able to find the direction of the resultant by doing some trig. Okay. So we're going to have this. 30 plus. Can someone go 15 times 2.2 for me? 33, I think, but don't quote me on that. Is it? Almost an isosceles triangle. Now, this angle here was 40 degrees. 
How big is that angle there? Okay, 140 degrees. And looks like my resultant is this. Can I erase that so it's not quite so cluttered? Now, this question doesn't want me to find the resultant. It wants me to find the direction. It wants me to find theta. Can you already tell me, if that's which way my curling stone must have been moving initially, what of what? North of south? South of west? South of what? Okay, this is going to be south of east. Now I just need to find the degrees. Let's see. What I'm always looking for, if I want to find an angle, if possible, it's nice if I can find use the cosine law or the sine law, find a pair. Sine law is when you have a pair. I don't know those two. I don't know those two. I don't know those two. That's not going to work very well. Let me make this 140 a little smaller so that takes up a little less room. 140 degrees. I think what I'm going to have to do first is use the cosine law to find that. And then once I know that, I can go sine of this divided by x equals sine theta divided by 33 and go shift sine and find theta. So the cosine law, which is on your formula sheet. Do you remember the cosine law? Can you read it to me, Jesse? x squared equals 30 squared plus 33 squared minus 2 times 30 times 33 cosine of 140. This doesn't find you x. What does this find you? So please don't forget the square root. 30 squared plus 33 squared. The nice thing is you can type this in in one line if you have a good calculator, times or minus 2 times 30 times 33 cosine of 140 square root. I get 59.21 for x. And now I have a pair. I know both of those. So I can say sine of 140 over the side across from it equals the sine of our mystery angle over the side across from it. That's the sine law, also on your formula sheet, by the way. Mike, how would I get the, the sine theta by itself here? What times what divided by what? Do the whole thing. So I'll give you a hint. 33. I'll give you another hint. Sine 140 divided by what? Do that on your calculator. Oh, this doesn't give you theta. What does this give you? Sine theta. How would I find theta at the very, very end? Inverse sine. And I get, oh, I bet you the answer is supposed to be, I bet you the answer they started out with to make this question up was exactly 21 degrees. Okay. So for momentum for collisions, if they're straight and linear, just make sure you let to the right be positive and to the left be negative. When are they straight and linear? Uh, the ballistic pendulum, where you're firing a bullet into a block, that was a collision, and then a change in height. Oh, change in height, energy. Or we did the ones where the roller coaster rolled down the hill, crashed into another roller coaster, and then how high would they go? That was a nice linear collision as well, with the roller coaster stuck together. Circular motion. A blue ball, I don't know why they told me that it was blue. A ball is swung in a horizontal circle and completes a single rotation in 1.2 seconds. 
A 0.44 meter long cord makes an angle of 35 degrees with the vertical during the ball's motion. What's the centripetal acceleration? Okay. I'm thinking whenever they give me one of these ones at an angle, free body diagram, probably a triangle. Well, let's see. What are the forces acting on this sphere? Get the obvious ones. Gravity down. <clears throat> what else? Tension. What else? Nothing else. Wait a minute. It wants circular acceleration. Remember, circular acceleration, circular force, Mike, was the net force. It never actually appeared on a free body diagram. It's what you got when you added the forces together. How will I add these forces together? Well, how will I add vectors together? Draw them tip to tail. Now to do this, Sam, I always draw the easiest one first. What's the easiest force to draw here? I would go like this. I always draw the toughest force next. What's the toughest force? Tension. Now, I know not to go to there. I know not to stop there. How do I know I want to stop exactly right here? What path is this tracing out? A circle. Where must the net force be? Toward the? Has to be dead horizontal. Okay. What we're saying then, Sam, is this plus this, this plus this is what gives you your circular force, your centripetal force. Um, oh, we need an angle. Looks like right here is 35 degrees, right? So I'm pretty sure right here is 35 degrees. Because I'm tight. They want me to find centripetal acceleration. Well, on my formula sheet, I have this. AC equals V squared over R, or it equals 4 pi squared R over T squared. They told me how long it takes to go around once. That's the period. I think I'm going to end up using this one here. So let's see. 4 pi squared r oh I don't know the radius. Oh, I know the period though. What's the period? 1.2 squared. So you know what? I don't think I needed to necessarily draw this right now. I think I just need to figure out the radius, r. Now I drew this with you guys anyways because often they're asking you for a mass or a tension and this will be your approach. Next time I'll read the question a little more carefully. How can I find what r is? Well if I know that angle, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse in this triangle here. How about here? What's this? Hypotenuse. Sine 35 equals the radius divided by 0.44. Lee, could you get the r by itself? That's what I'll put right here. So actually, this question wasn't as bad as I thought. This was basically write down the equation and do some grade 9 trig. Four times pi squared times 0.44 sine 35 divided by 1.2 squared. I get a uh, radius of 6.92 meters. Yeah. 
Acceleration, Mr. Duick. What did I say, radius? Acceleration of 6.92 meters per second squared. I was going, this doesn't look right, because if that's that long, the radius can't be 6.92. That's why I was pausing there and going, what? I've done something silly. Okay? So other twists on this question, they might ask you to find the centripetal force or the mass, because now that you know the acceleration, if they told you the mass, you could find the centripetal force, mass times acceleration. Or they could ask you to find the tension, because if you knew either one of those, you could find the tension using trig from this diagram. Electrostatics. Ah, wrong button again. Come on, Mr. Duke. Electrostatics. Alpha particles with a mass of blah, 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 and a charge of blah, 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 are fired towards each other from a great distance. They're both positively charged. <clears throat> will they attract or will they repel each other? Repel. If they each have a speed of that much to start with, what will be their minimum separation distance? I guess what we're saying is this. They each have kinetic energy. The closer they move together, the more that kinetic energy gets turned into electric potential energy. They're going to slow down. They're going to slow down. When they come to a stop for a split second, their minimum separation distance, that's when all of their kinetic energy has become electric potential energy. Then they'll start to repel each other. Does that make sense? All of our kinetic is going to become potential. Does that make sense? All of our initial kinetic is going to become electric potential. Well, kinetic energy, what's that? Half mv squared. Now we have two particles moving. Thankfully, they're the same mass and the same speed. So I'm just going to go like this. 2 times a half mv squared. And conveniently, Christina, the halves cancel. I'll take that. Now, electrostatics. This was the one that had like eight formulas that all looked identical. So you might want to very carefully look at your formula sheet and ask yourself, which of those is the potential energy between two point charges? I'll give you a hint. If it's point charges, it always has a K in it. Oh, are both charges the same? Do you mind? Can I save myself some time and just do this? Because Q1 times Q2 is just Q squared, if they're the same. Less typing. What do they want me to find? Do you know the mass? They told you. Do you know the speed? They told you. Do you know K? Not, what is that? It's, it's a constant. It's on your sheet. 9 times 10 to the 9. Okay. Did they tell you the charge? Yep. Could you find R? In fact, I think this has suddenly become straight cross multiplying. I think the radius is going to be K Q squared all over M V squared. I'll assume you can type that. What other questions will they ask with electrostatics? Another classic one is uh, two charges finding the electric field between them, or at, sorry, electric field at a certain location, finding the voltage between them. That was what I asked you on your test. Okay. The key to remember, the tr tricky part with electrostatics unit was uh, making sure you were finding what they wanted you to find. A number of you found the voltage when I asked for electric field, or found energy when I asked for electric field. And I know, Spencer, it's unfortunate because <coughs> energy begins with an E and electric field begins with an E, and they use the letter E for both of them, uh, EP for potential energy. That's why I always use capital P, capital E for potential energy. I know, but you just have to keep them straight. Oh, remember the first row in the formula sheet? Those were the vectors. We don't put the positives and negatives in. We said for forces and fields, we decide the direction. Like charges repel, 
unlike charge is attract. Hey, what was the direction for electric field? Which way would a positive charge want to go if it could, if it was sitting right there? How big a positive charge? Such a small one that it didn't have its own electric field, because otherwise that would change the question. Uh, there was a part B to this question. I think the part B was uh, using principles of physics right to explain question. I think it said something like, uh, if the speed of each was doubled, what would happen to the separation distance using principles of physics right to explain? If that was doubled, you'd have a 4 coming out of there because it would be 2 squared. The separation distance would be 1 quarter as big. Magnetic forces. I don't have a circuit here, sorry. A 0.75 meter metal rod is suspended as shown. A current of 13 amps then flows as indicated. Is the tension in the springs increased or decreased? So it looks like if I'm reading this properly, we are running a current this way, this way, this way. Which way is the current which way is the current traveling in this bar? To the right. Which way is the magnetic field? So point your thumbs to the right. Fingers out of the page. Which way is the force on this bar? Down. So will the tension in those springs increase or decrease? Okay. By how much does the tension change? I think it's going to change by the magnetic force. And I think the magnetic force is going to be... Did they tell me the magnetic field? Did they tell me the current? Did they tell me the length? Well, here's the question I need to ask, I guess. Does the current go just from here to here, or do I include the whole length? Hmm. Pardon me? So the portion of this rod that's actually getting the current is just this stretch right here because there's no reason for electrons or positive charges, the current, to flow in either of those directions. So 0.45. And the answer is, uh, come on, 0.22 times 0.13 times 0.13, Mr. Duick, times 13 times 0.45, 1.29 newtons. Another magnetic forces question. So an 18 centimeter long metal rod of mass 35 grams is suspended from the ceiling with light wire. A uniform magnetic field is directed vertically upward. When there is a current in the rod, it swings outward as shown. So if it swings outward like this, which direction is the force acting on this current carrying rod? To the right. Point your fingers, sorry, point your palm to the right, because that's which way the force is. Which way is the magnetic field? Up. So can you figure out, is the current going from X to Y, or is the current going from Y to X? Which way is your thumb pointing? Right? So here's taking the right-hand rule in reverse. They're telling you the force is that way. Magnetic field is up the page, so my palm is pointing to the right. My thumb is pointing this way. I think from X to Y must be the direction of the current. So the direction, X to Y. Then the question is, uh, how big? Anytime they give you something hanging at an angle, do a free body diagram. So here's my mass. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious ones. Gravity. Tension, 
and I guess the magnetic force is exactly to the right. Let's draw this as an equilibrium triangle. Draw the easiest one first, Sam. Gravity. Draw the toughest one next. Tension. I know, though, that magnetic force is exactly to the right. Otherwise, this wouldn't be hanging there. So I know to stop right there. And I think I can find magnetic force. This is 15 degrees right here. They did give me the mass, 35 grams, so 0 0.035. I know G. I think I can go opposite and adjacent. Which trig function links magnetic force and gravity? Tangent. In fact, we would say this. Tangent of 15 equals opposite over adjacent. The magnetic force is going to be mg times the tan of 15. Ah, but wait a minute. They want me to find the direction of the current, the magnitude of the current. So I'm going to take this magnetic force, which is equal to mg tan of 15, and I'm going to recognize this is also b i l. Right? Get the i by itself. The current is going to be mg tan 15 divided by BL. Did they give me the mass? 35 grams, so 0 0.035. G is 9.8. Tan 15 divided by, did they give me the magnetic field? 0.22. Did they give me the length of this? Oh, 18 centimeters, so 0.18. Two point three amps from X to Y. I said to you that on your written on Monday there's going to be some kind of a graph question. So here's an example of one. An experiment was performed on the surface of an asteroid. A mass was dropped from various heights and the time taken to fall was recorded. A says, plot a straight line graph of D versus T squared. They gave me D and T, so I guess I'll have to square these really quickly on my calculator. Takes a couple of seconds. 1.31 squared, 1.72. Thank you. One point seven two. Oh, Lee, what's 0 squared? 1.56 squared. 2.43, 1.77 squared, 3.13, 2.05 squared, 4.20, 2.15 squared, 4.6. Okay, let's see if I can graph this goes through, oh, I need to pick a good scale. Let's see, my distance goes from 0 to 1.3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 squares, 1.3 meters, I bet you each square, 0 0.1. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1, 1.2, 1 1.4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 22 to 3, 24, 25, 26. I don't know. Each square be 0. 0.2 maybe? 0. 0.2, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.8, 1. 0. 0.2, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.8, 2. 0. 0.2, 0. 0.4, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.8, 3. 0.2, 0.4, 0.6, 0.8, 4. Let's graph. Goes through 0, 0. 0. 
comma point or sorry point one seven two comma point five. So there's one point six. One point seven goes through point five about there. Two point four three goes through point seven. Two point four three goes through point seven about there. Three point one goes through point nine. Three point one goes through point nine about there. Getting roughly a straight line. Four point two goes through one point two. Four point two goes through one point two about there. And four point six goes through one point three. Four point two, four point four, four point six, one point three about Oh, Mr. Do it a little lower. About there. Try that again. No. Okay, freehand it, Mr. Duke. Use a ruler, but I don't I can't put one on the screen. There's my line of best fit. B find the slope. So slope is rise over run. It uh, if you're graphing a line, Megan, you have to use points from your line. I would not use this point right here because it's not on my line. Uh, I'll use, uh, give me a nice point. How about right there? That looks like the rise is 1 over the run is 3.4. Units, meters, seconds squared. Hey, what do you think the slope of this graph is if the units are meters over seconds squared? So when it asks me to find the acceleration due to gravity, I'm pretty sure that's just the slope. 1 divided by 3.4. I get 0 0.29 meters per second squared. What's the acceleration due to gravity on this very, very small asteroid? 0 0.29 meters per second squared. That's what I mean by giving you some kind of a graph to interpret. Okay. And then there's going to be some kind of a using principles of physics right to explain. So here's a circuitry question. It says, when checked with a voltmeter, an old 6-volt lantern battery shows the expected reading of 6 volts. However, the battery fails to light a low resistance light bulb. Identify the property of the battery that must have changed as it aged and explain why this change to the property results in the bulb no longer lighting. I'm going to draw a little circuit. There's the battery. There's the bulb. Now, it's saying that it's finding 6 volts across this battery. So it's saying that before we hook it up, the voltmeter measures 6 volts. But as soon as we hook it up, nothing. Well, there's one more part to this battery. Remember we said at the very end that we said batteries have an internal resistance. Normally, before you hook the battery up, since no current is flowing, you don't lose anything through here. But if this is measuring 6 volts from the battery, and we're getting 0 volts here, where must I be losing all my voltage? Right there. You know what must have changed? The internal resistance. I'm guessing some of the chemicals inside the battery have corroded or rusted and so now the current can't travel through the battery unimpeded anymore. Explain why this change. I would draw this circuit and I would say using Kirchhoff's laws 6 volts from battery 0 volts in bulb Therefore, 6 volts in internal resistance. Voltage is what times what? 
v equals what times what? V equals I little r. That's what we call the internal resistance. I don't think your current has changed. What's happened is this has increased. That's why old batteries stop working, even if you never use them. Okay. That's what I have for a quick review of the course. I hope that helped.